So now that after we have spent some time understanding what it is to be a sampling distribution of a mean value, then we are now ready to look into the most essential understanding regarding sampling distributions. So here we are. Let's have a look and study about and learn about the central limit theorem. Let me start out our understanding by introducing an example. So let's pay attention to my computer screen here. So our first example in this video lecture, example one, the starting of the problem is indicating mosquitoes are known for an average lifetime of seven days with standard deviation three hours. And three hours in another way to understand. 0.125 of a day, assuming mosquito lifetimes are normally distributed. Question A now. So in the beginning before question A started, then this is just basically introducing the population of mosquitoes. And I will get further into that as we go along further. But the idea now is that from this population of mosquitoes, a sample of 25 mosquitoes is collected. And our first question now is asking us to find mu x bar, the mean of the sampling distribution. Then in the same question A, there's another part here asking find sigma x bar, the standard deviation of this sampling distribution. So now if we're looking closely here, and right from the beginning of our problem inside of the beginning description here, then the problem introduces us to the, the mosquitoes. And so here, mosquitoes as a plural, but did not indicate how many mosquitoes there are. So all we know is there are a lot of mosquitoes out there. And further, knowing there are a lot of mosquitoes out there, but without knowing how many there are, then this is reasonable to consider all of these mosquitoes out there in the world to be a population of mosquitoes. So once again, mosquitoes are known for an average lifetime of seven days. So average lifetime here, I'm going to start breaking it down step by step here, but right in this beginning description of the problem, an average lifetime of seven days. This is a mean value, a mean lifetime. We are studying about lifetime on for mosquitoes. So now, as a population of mosquitoes, I am going to define a random variable x, but just a plain capital letter x to represent, uh, this is how about the lifetime, how long a mosquito can live. So the lifetime of a mosquito. So provided we all agree that there are a lot of mosquitoes out there, then the plain capital letter X here represents the lifetime of a mosquito, one mosquito. So this is, to be clear again, this is the population basically along with our understanding in terms of uh, sampling distribution, then this is the beginning population where we picked our samples from. So this is the, the population of individual mosquitoes. So this represents the population of individual mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Okay. And and so now further reading into the part that I highlight with the yellow color, average lifetime of seven days. So we don't need to worry about how scientists come up with that, came up with that number, but let's now assume the validity of these values being given to us here. But so the role of this average lifetime of seven days is indicating that we have a population, we have already have a known population mean being seven. And this value right now is just the plain old mu symbol, population mean value being seven days. And so 
this is the center mu is the center of this data our data here currently is being the the population of mosquitoes of individual mosquitoes the center of the data and so now like I keep explaining so many times after recognizing the center of any data the next step here is to recognize the standard deviation so our mosquito lifetimes are measured and found to have a standard deviation of three hours and three hours there are 24 hours in a day so three hours of the day we're looking at sigma equals a point one two five of a day now the reason I chose uh, to write the, the standard deviation value instead of being three hours I wrote 0.125 day simply because to make it agree with my mean value the units on my mean value so here the importance of this sigma value of the standard deviation and it's a population standard de deviation this is the as I keep mentioning so many many times this is the average spreading of values of so think about we have a center of all mosquito lifetimes and then this is how all mosquito lifetimes on average are spread it away from that center and so we had a population mean mu and we have a, we already had a population standard deviation sigma the next piece of information assuming mosquito lifetimes are normally distributed this information for now we can put a a pause on this we don't need to for now we can um, temporarily ignore this information assuming mosquitoes lifetimes are normally dis distributed we can for now uh, ignore that and later on we will go back and, and understand that a little more but so here starting into question a now the another important information is being revealed here a sample of 25 mosquitoes is collected let's not worry about uh, the question asking us finding mu x bar but now after we understand and, and study what it is to be a sampling distribution what I need everybody or anybody who views this video to understand clearly is that anytime we can pick up a sample so here what we have here is a sample of 25 mosquitoes so immediately quickly on scratch paper we picked up a sample where the sample size allowed me to write sort of like at the bottom of the my writing board here but sample size being 25 so we have a capital letter n here n equals 25 so now what I have here is a sample within this 25 mosquitoes we can have a as in a scratch work we can have some sample mean of their lifetimes so some scientists come out there to the wood search for or collected 25 mosquitoes come back and we average their average lifetime within this group of 25 mosquitoes and so we didn't even have to know the, what that particular sample mean calculated from this uh, collected sample in this given sample but the main idea to un understand now is that is that once we picked up a sample we can pick up another sample that means consequently our sample mean is the value that belongs to a sampling distribution where each sample is a is out of 25 mosquitoes and that that's connecting with our understanding in sampling distribution I call this I define this with the random variable capital X bar 25 and so here I'm going to define capital let capital X bar 25 to be the mean lifetime the mean lifetime of a sample of 25 mosquitoes so this mean is specifically designated by and remember how I used my subscript indicating the sample size here but so each mean here is a sample mean is a mean that came out from 25 uh, mosquitoes and so now throughout throughout our study about sampling distribution 
then I had a part in throughout my videos there clearly distinguishing the difference between these two random variable here. This is a population of lifetime, a population but of, of lifetime of individual mosquitoes, whereas this is a population, it's also a population, but up, it's a population of sample mean values where each sample comes out from, came out from 25 mosquitoes. And so this population as well will have a population mean, the center of this population is uh, the mu, but not simply a mu, the mu where data is sample means. So that's what we are looking in our question on the computer screen here. We are looking for, hey, find that mu sub x bar. It is the mean value of the sampling distribution. So once again, as a reminder, this is a sampling distribution. This is a population of single individual mosquito lifetimes. And then once we found this value, so right now it's a, it's a question to be found, it's an answer to be found. And then the, after finding the center, we are looking for the average spreading on this population, which is now we must give that the sigma x bar notation. And these are the two pieces of information waiting for some answers. And so now, Clearly understanding our goal is to find the population mean on all sample means right here, or it's the population mean of the sampling distribution that we are currently working with. Then throughout our discussion on sampling distribution of mean values, mu x bar is the only way to, fi to find mu x bar throughout what we've learned is we're going to have to find one sample. Out and you can think about our first sample is currently existing right here, even though we don't, e we don't know what value exactly that is yet. But theoretically, what happens here is that the, our first sample existing inside of this sampling distribution of the mean here, our first sample, we're going to need to come up with another one, x bar 2, and we come up with another x bar 3, provided these are all in the same sample size, uh, n equals capital N equals 25. And come up with a fourth sample. And keep coming up with more sample means. And keep, and then once we've, for some reason, for however we're doing it, however we could be doing it, but com after coming up with all sample means, we are going to divide by the number of uh, all samples. there are. And throughout my video lessons on sampling distribution of the means, then there are going to be a lot of samples. So this number, the number of all samples there are out there really is simply a mystery. So basically this is what we need to do to find mu x bar. Looks like a big, a real big work waiting ahead for us, for us right here. But now gladly the good news, this is what I call the good news, we don't need to do any of that. This is my reason for crossing this out doesn't mean that this is wrong work, it just means we, we can completely bypass doing all this hopelessly searching for all sample means out there because the answer is already the uh, right around the corner. The answer to this mu x bar, skipping, bypassing all the calculation, the formal calculation, the answer is simply 7. So how did I know to come up with this answer so quickly? What guarantees this answer for us is that anytime we are on a sampling distribution of the means, then mu x bar, of course, the way to calculate it, to calculate it is always uh, going through this work right here. But final calculated answer will always equals to the mu, the mean value on the, from the beginning population, once we know it. And so didn't we already knew this from 
the beginning information of our problem that mu equals uh, 7. We already knew this and that is why this result guarantees that our answer is equal to 7 as well. So, let me remind everybody that we already nailed down according to given information our beginning population here the population of individual mosquitoes where each one of them has a lifetime and so mu equals 7 was the average lifetime of mosquitoes. So, this was a known this is our in this problem this is our known population mean mu. So, once we know this then finding this mu x bar here on our sampling distribution of the mean this answer here can quickly be 7 because the result proven here is that the and the calculated answer to mu x bar must equals to mu and so this is part of the what I'm what the result guaranteed our quick calculation answer there came out from the central limit theorem but please don't get me wrong that this is all there is in the central limit theorem this is a only one very small part of the central limit theorem and as we're going through different questions in in our example i will be able to point out other part of central limit theorem that help us answer these different questions right here but so our first thing to understand well, the one small part from the central limit theorem now helps us quickly find the mu x bar on any sampling distribution of the means. So, the answer to this question now mu x bar in this question equals 7 and that was because of mu equals 7. So, now that we have found for this sampling distribution of the mean mu x bar on this sampling distribution of the mean equals 7 and all that explanation came in the earlier part of the lesson and so this mean right here is to be understood as the center of the data the center of this data being a sampling distribution of the mean. So, back to the question on our computer screen here the same question part A of the example, but now it is asking us to find sigma x bar. So, the next part here left for us is to find the value of sigma x bar and I did mention earlier sigma x bar is to represent the average spreading. because one center is found not all sample means falls exactly on this mean on this center and so we want to find out on average how sample mean values are spread it away from this center and so finding a population standard deviation is usually a challenging work and especially here we are finding standard deviation of a whole bunch of sample mean values and so good news for us again that we can skip finding all sample means the point throughout the entire example in part a so far is we can skip finding all sample means no need let me make a quick little note right there no need to find all sample mean values we can skip doing that because but we can quickly find an answer to this sigma x bar sigma x bar in this case here can be found there is a little formula sigma over square root n and so I will get a little further into this quick little handy formula here but particularly for it, this problem of ours right here this is how useful it can be so, our average spreading in this for this sampling distribution of the mean is going to be sigma x bar 
equals we already knew that our sigma that plain sigma our population standard deviation from our beginning population was given to be 0.125 of a day so knowing that information then calculating quickly calculating our sigma x bar value here all we need is to directly utilize uh, the value of our known sigma 0.125 we are going to divide that according to this proven formula square root of and remind yourself and here in the concept of sampling distribution of the mean then this is the n is to represent the sample size and so in our problem since the sample is being is containing each sample contains uh, 25 mosquitoes then we are going to put 25 here for n or n equals uh, 25 in our problem and as I have already rem reminded and so now we are ready for our quick calculation of the sigma x bar value calculation comes out for sigma x bar to be 0 0.025 And so now to highlight the importance of this value, we've just found the value of sigma x bar here. This sigma x bar is playing in the role of the average spreading of our sampling distribution of the mean. So we already found center earlier in the same question of the example. And now we've found the average spreading, how other sample data being spread it away from our center on the sampling distribution. And so looking back at what we did, this result, this handy formula came out as another small part, as another statement, as another result of the central limit theorem. So another statement in the central limits theorem guaranteed this guarantees uh, this result for us in enable, enabling us to find the answer of sigma x bar quickly and effectively all right so now we are ready to have our first look into the central limit theorem and namely right now i am introducing the central limit theorem part one and central limit theorem commonly is is referred to as the CLT right here. This is short for Central Limit Theorem. But so the answers to question A are completely based on the first statement of the Central Limit Theorem. So let's read on my computer screen here to see. And so this is part one of the Central Limit Theorem. And part one of Central Limit Theorem has two important statements here. And as I said earlier, our answers to question part A, to part A of the example one, are based on statement number one of this central limit theorem part one. And so this is what the central limit theorem part one says right here. Let X, the usual plain capital X letter, represent a population, some population, with mu, with mean mu, and standard deviation sigma. So the, the introduction of this central limit theorem is stating that basically x here is some beginning population. The idea now is that samples, once we understand with that we have a beginning population, then samples are being picked or being selected from this beginning population. And furthermore, the intention of this introduction of the theorem is that the mean, mu, and the standard deviations, sigma, those are all given. So with known mu and sigma, so mu and sigma belongs to the beginning population x right here and once uh, we understand something about our beginning population 
than samples of size n. So we have seen my explanations back in the when we were still discussing about the sampling distribution of the mean that all sample sizes, all samples uh, within one sampling distribution must be having the same sample size and, and that was the reason why I have been using this capital X bar subscript n right here. This is to represent the mean of a sample size n selected from the beginning population x. And so immediately as soon as we realize that capital X bar sub n here is a sampling distribution of the mean, then it has a center that we refer to as mu x bar and it has a an average spread that we refer to as sigma x bar. And so central limit theorem part one statement number one says uh, finding this mu x bar value we can bypass finding all sample means. We don't need to do that. All we do now is we can get a quick answer as long as our mu and sigma from the beginning populations are known then finding mu x bar is simply given by that easy formula mu x bar equals a value with mu no matter so even if we spend our time finding all sample means out there and average out all the sample mean values we are going to end up with this value of the mu value that we already knew so it gives us such a huge advantage there and uh, sigma x bar once again, we can bypass finding all sample mean values because the answer to this is simply given by a short little handy formula, sigma that we already knew from the beginning population divided by square root of the sample size. And of course, the sample size is once we decide to pick a sample, we must know, know our own sample size. So these two little formulas came straight out from statement number one of our central limit theorem. And now we continue into part B of our example one. And so from part A, then we already knew that our capital X bar 25 represents the mean lifetime of a sample of 25 mosquitoes. Further, we knew from part A that this is a sampling distribution of the sample means. There's not only one sample mean here, there are infinitely many other sample means. And the sample mean being mentioned in part A is only one among many other sample means at uh, size 25. We further found from part A that the center of this sampling distribution of the mean had value precisely 7 and the standard deviation the sigma x bar I should have used the uh, the correct term for this but this is remind yourself that this sigma x bar is to be referred as the standard error so the standard error or the standard deviation on the sampling distribution of the mean was found to be 0.05 and the meaning of this mu x bar is it's the center of our sampling distribution of the mean. And this sigma x bar that we found here was the average spreading on our sampling distribution of the means of the mean. So this question we're looking at now is and recall that when we were studying previously about specifically the sampling distribution, when we were learning specifically about the sampling distribution of the mean, at somewhere at the end of my video lessons there, I talked about uh, any sampling distribution since being a, a distribution of a continuous random variable, then eventually our sampling distribution can have a distribution shape 
it could be so x bar 25 we're looking at here could be having a shape like this after constructing histograms so all values of the capital x bar 25 going from low to high here the distribution shape could go up and down up and up and down and up and down with multiple peaks or from low to high our sampling distribution of the mean this is all the values on the horizontal axis here. Our sampling distribution of the means could be a, even though a one single peak, but either a skewed right or a skewed left. Or it could be a distribution that is nicely symmetric or being a bell curve. So This is the normal distribution. We want to know, we are particularly interested in knowing that whether or not our sampling distribution of the mean at size 25 can be normally distributed or can be following a distribution shape being a normal distribution. And so, and once it would be a normal distribution, of course it would take center at mu x bar and average spreading to be sigma x bar. But the question now is primarily regarding about whether or not we are having the distribution shape that follows a nice bell curve, the normal distribution. And is it going to be a yes or no question? And we are going to study how we can decide our answer as being a yes or a no. And so back on my screen here, that's how the question is being stated, is the sampling distribution. This is, I'm talking about the capital X bar 25 here. Is the sampling distribution a normal distribution? And again, I need to remind any of, anybody who views this video that any of our sample in this sampling distribution is collected from this, what I so call the beginning population. Or maybe let me just highlight again. This is called the beginning population. Okay, and so in order to answer our question about whether or not the sampling distribution capital X bar 25 can be a normal distribution or not, we need to go back to our beginning population and consider some further given information. So looking back at the beginning description of our beginning population, then there was that part where I was saying earlier that we can put a pause on that, we can put it aside, but now it's time to dive into that piece of information. Now right from the beginning description, it said assuming mosquito lifetimes, this assumption now is becoming handy assuming mosquito lifetimes are normally distributed. So this third piece of highlighted information here, I am going to fill that information into my, as the given information in my beginning population. But what we knew, what we already knew is that our capital X, which represents the lifetime of a mosquito, so now the entire population of mosquito lifetimes, we knew that X is already a normal distribution where the center of that population is at 7. So just like how we study about any bell curve then n7 comma 0.125. In other words we're looking at our random variable here is being normally distributed at center 7 and it's average spreading 0.125. So this I have to ver clarify one more time this is known or this is a given information. And let's find out how this third piece of information, the, the distribution shape on our, from our beginning population will affect the answer to our sampling distribution on the mean here. So again, back to our question regarding the sampling distribution capital X bar 25 here. The question was, is it true or not that our capital X bar 25 
will follow a normal distribution or will be normally distributed where the mu, where the center is 7 and average spreading on this, in this case is a 0 0.025. Remind yourself that this is the mu x bar which has the equal value with mu but this is sigma over square root of 25 here. So in other words this is sigma x bar value center and average spread on our sampling distribution of the mean. But primarily we are concerned about the shape of the distribution. Is that a bell curve shape or not? Yes sir. or no. And so now I'm going to tell anybody who views this video the answer to this question is yes. Our sampling distribution capital X bar 25 will be a normal distribution, will be normally distributed. The answer is yes. So how do I know that so quickly? The reason is simply because, so this is because, as long as our beginning, so we knew from our beginning population that our capital X, our plain old capital X, was already by itself a normal distribution. So this is, we're taking that as given information. So capital X was normally distributed at center 7 and with average spread 0.125, the standard deviation there. So this was known, again, keep reminding everybody this, but this is known. And so because of that, we will consequently lead to, it will automatically imply that any sampling distribution where we drew sample out of this beginning population. So here specifically our sampling distribution is the capital X bar 25. So any sampling distribution drew from, drawn from the, from our beginning population will automatically be a bell curve distribution shape. So here capital X bar will be a normal distribution as well. Where the center of this capital X bar 25 is 7 and average spread here is actually 0 0.05. So this, so now the reason I can guarantee this implication, what leads us to this implication, this conclusion is another part of the central limits theorem. So this result came out as a statement, this result is being guaranteed by a statement, another statement in our central limits theorem. The central limit theorem has another statement saying that any time if our beginning population, the population where we picked samples from, that's what I call the beginning population. So if the beginning population already had a known distribution shape being a bell curve, then any sampling, sampling distribution of the mean will come out being a normal distribution as well. That's how I know the answer to this question as a yes so quickly. All right, so let's now have a quick look at our central limit theorem right here where we're looking into a, another statement where it guarantees the result we have used to answer our question in part B of the example one. So earlier I show everybody how we utilized statement number one of central limit theorem part one to answer about, to find the answers about where the center of, the, of any, on any sampling distribution of the means as well as the, the average spread on any sampling distribution of the mean. So statement number two right here of the central limit theorem. So quite a useful theorem. One theorem has many different statements that guarantee different results for us, quite useful results. But so statement number two here start out saying, so at this point, anyone who viewed my earlier videos on sampling distribution of the means is well aware about uh, the difference between capital X bar with a subscript N and a capital X right here. So capital X bar subscript N here is any sampling distribution of the mean. So any, any sampling distribution of the mean is 
So this term right here is powerful. It's basically it's, it is a, a a guarantee that it's guaranteed that the distribution on, of any sampling dis distribution of the mean will be a normal distribution taking center at mu x bar and sigma x bar for average spread. If x, so x here is the beginning population where any of our sample is being selected from. So if x itself is known or is a normal distribution. So just like how I argue in my problem, in our problem previously, part b of example one right here. It's all due to the fact that we already knew our beginning population known to have a normal distribution shape right here. So according to statement number two in our central limit theorem, then our this sampling distribution of the mean here, the capital X bar 25, must be a normal distribution, where the center is the mu X bar value, and the average spread is course the corresponding sigma X bar being 0.05. All right, and so we are now at question C of our example one. So question C is saying, if a sample of 16 mosquitoes was collected instead, I need to pause a little bit and hopefully catch everybody's attention. But instead, instead of what? Instead of 25 mosquitoes in a sample. What I would like to point out here is that in this problem, question C, we actually change to a different sample size. So our sample size in each sample is no longer 25 mosquitoes like in the previous two questions. Here each of our sample has 16 mosquitoes. That means, just one last reminder, but Capital X bar 25, this is to represent the mean lifetime. Of a sample of 25 mosquitoes. Okay, we already done what we already found that this sampling distribution where each sample has sample size 25, that's we already knew that it had a normal distribution shape. It had center at 7 and got average spread being 0 0.05. But now I have to make it clear with everybody in this when we begin question C right here, we are we are no longer okay. we are no longer working with capital X bar 25. This was capital X bar 25 in our question here is done. We are we already know the distribution shape, we had the center, we knew the center, and we knew the average spread. What we are looking into now is the sampling distribution with the random variable capital X bar 16 instead. And the meaning of this random variable is similar. This is the mean lifetime. of a sample, of any sample. Uh, but each of our sample has only 16 mosquitoes. And so now, once we are clear that we are working in a completely different sampling distribution of the mean, because the sample size in each sample now is changed to a different sample size, then we have to, and that's the entire intention of this question, it's, and it's extra practice for everyone, but we need to once again rediscover, we need to discover again the center of this new sampling distribution, of this new population, as well as we need to find the average spreading of this new population of values. And further, and the third thing is to recognize whether this 
brand new sampling distribution, the capital X bar 60 is going to be a, a normal distribution, a bell curve shape or not. So, so now this question C here is really one question but looking for the answer of three different pieces of information. So let's one by one track it down right here. So even though we change our sample size to n equals 16, not as big of a sample as it for capital X bar 25, and we will be having a lot of sample means, infinitely many sample means, but in the end, if we're attempting to find this mu x bar, the central limit theorem guarantees that we don't need to search for all sample means just to find the population mean of all sample mean values. We don't need to do any of that. Here, the answer after calculation would simply be 7 again, simply because we already had a known value for our beginning population. Once again, this is the beginning population where we collect any samples from. So our beginning population, we knew that it had a center being 7. So consequently, our mu x bar on any sampling distribution will be equal to the same calculated value. And so further, according to the central limit theorem, statement number 1, our average spreading on this sampling distribution of the mean here is going, can be quickly calculated by the known standard deviation from the beginning population. But now I am going to divide by square root of our current sample size in this sampling distribution is only a 16. So 0.125 divide by, divided by square root of 16. The answer here comes out to be 0.035. And so once again, this is center and this is average spreading. How all sample mean values on average are spread away from our re recognized or found center. Then again, after finding center as well as average spreading sigma x bar, our next question now is, and the next part of the same question here is we want to, cons we want to consider the shape of our distribution. So simply because our beginning population was already known to be a normal distribution shape where its center was 7 and its average spreading was a 0.125. Here I'm once again talking about our beginning population and this was known information. So as long as our beginning population was known to be a bell curve setting, a bell curve distribution, then according to the central limit theorem, so here once again we are applying that result I stated, I pointed out in the central limit theorem statement number two right here. But central limit theorem guarantees the following result. As long as we have our beginning population being a normal distribution, then any sampling distribution, here it's a different sampling distribution, no longer capital X bar 25. So that's why I'm, I'm repeating the, the kind of uh, example here, but capital X bar 16 is also going to be a normal distribution. The center for this sampling distribution is a 7 and average spread here in this case is 0 0.03125. So clearly capital X bar 16 is a different sampling distribution compared with capital X bar 25 due to the fact that they, they have different average spreading. But so as far as that question about is the capital X bar 16 a normal distribution? Or not? Would the two answer choice yes or no? Our answer now is uh, yes. And now we are at question D of our example one here. And the question D is, is asking as following. 
if the assumption wasn't there and the sample size was 36 mosquitoes instead. Find mu x bar and sigma x bar is this sampling distribution of the mean a normal distribution. So the easy part similar to earlier questions we ran into is this part right here where we change to a different sample size again. So here sample size was 36 mosquitoes instead. So instead of 25 mosquitoes in a sample, instead of 16 mosquitoes in a sample, here we are working with 36 mosquitoes in a sample. So once again, I have to clarify that we are no longer, we are no longer working with capital X bar 25, neither capital X bar 16. We are done with working with any of these. We are now considering 36 mosquitoes in one sample. So I am going to define a capital X bar 36 this time and with similar meaning. This is to represent the mean lifetime mean lifetime of a sample of this time 36 mosquitoes. So we have what we have here is a sampling distribution at sample size 36 in each sample. For now, I would like to put aside this starting statement saying if the assumption wasn't there. We'll get back to that and, and try to pull out further details regarding to that. But within what we can do, similar to uh, qu earlier questions, then in this sampling distribution of the mean, we can find out for ourselves where the center of that population is. So this population as a sampling distribution of the mean the center is mu x bar and now this is once again according to the central limit theorem. We can bypass searching for all sample means of size 36 but instead we can quickly come up with a final calculated answer to be simply 7. Once again because the population in the beginning already had a known mean. And then similarly Here's the app, here's the center, the center of our sampling distribution as a population of sample means. The next thing, again, we need to find out or recognize the average spreading, how all sample mean values on average are spread away from this recognized center. So standard deviation or formally standard error on this sampling distribution can be quickly calculated by from where the known standard deviation of the beginning population. We are now going to divide by the square root of our current sample size. So here in this sampling distribution we are working with 36 mosquitoes in one sample. So sigma x bar here must be calculated by 0.125 divided by square root of n which is the sample size and once again all of these are calculating calculation formula came out from statement one of the central limit theorem. So now calculation comes out to be point in four decimal places which is usually what I do here 0 0.0208 actually let's go with one further decimal so five decimals 0.02083. So this is our, what we found here is the average spreading of this curtain sampling distribution of the sample means of the mean. And now once again the third part of this question we would like to know is this sampling distribution of the mean a normal distribution? 
And if I can have everybody have a look at that uh, question from the computer screen. So we are still looking for that question. This curtain capital X bar 36 are we working with? We want to know if it is still a if it is a normally distributed population or not. If it would be, then 7 would be the center and average spreading here is being 0 0.02083. 0 However, the answer being yes or no needs a different way of arguing. The problem now is that we used to make our arguments based on the starting, the beginning population. If we knew the beginning population was a normal distribution, so x, capital plane, capital X, if we knew it was a normal distributed, normally distributed population, then we can easily make conclusion that this sampling distribution would be a normally distributed population as well and the answer would be yes. However, here we need to be more cautious due to this starting statement. So let's now turn our focus to this starting statement right here. If the assumption wasn't there, so primarily speaking, which assumption is this question talking about? The assumption that the assumption that the beginning population was a normally distributed population. Thus, in the beginning of the problem, if we look back at our beginning description of the problem, here's the assumption. Assuming mosquito lifetimes are normally distributed, distributed. and that's how I'm having, that's how we were able to use this as our reasoning that leads to any of the sampling distribution previously became a normally distributed population. However, this question D now, the, the problem would like to take away that assumption. Think about in real, in reality out there, not a lot of times, not too oftenly that we are given a normally distributed population. Or in other words, not too oftenly people would tell us that our beginning population would be a normally distributed, distributed population or not. And so, here we are going to pretend that we do not know this information. So I'm going to put I'm going to put a huge uh, cross. We're crossing out that information. We don't need that information. That means we cannot use we can no longer use this reasoning to con to make any conclusion regarding the normal distribution shape on this sampling on this current sampling distribution or not. So. The only reason we have been using so far, the only way to make reasoning we have been using so far is now taken away. But now I can tell anyone who is viewing this video, the answer to this question, the answer that is this sampling distribution, the capital X bar 36 normally distributed, the answer is still a yes. But since we took away the, the the only reasoning we have been using so far. How did I know to come up with the answer yes here? The reason we have a yes now, the reason we we still having a sampling distribution being a normal distribution here, simply because the sample size we are using, so capital N here that we are using in each sample, the sample size we're looking at, we're using here is 36 mosquitoes in each sample. This sample size, the good thing about this sample size is that it's greater than or equals to 30. So, simply because the sample size in each sample is a number that's greater than or equal to 30, then the sampling distribution capital X bar 36 here is going to be is going to become a normally distributed population. So this is another result being guaranteed by one statement among the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem has a different statement that guarantee this result. So once again, the bottom line now is we're still going to have a sampling distribution here of the mean 
being a normally distributed population? So the answer was a yes. But the reasoning leading to this was not because we had our beginning population being a normal distribution. We had that taken away according to this uh, description in the beginning of our question. But the reason we lead to this sampling distribution still being on a normal distribution simply because uh, the sample size we chose here, we used here, the sample size in each sample is a value that's above or at least equals 30. So let's now have another look at the central limits theorem part 1, but statement number 2. Here. It looks like answering questions B and C of example 1 led us to the understanding that any sampling distribution capital X bar sub n at any sample size n can be a normal distribution with center at mu x bar and average spreading sigma x bar. But then we found out that it is only true if your beginning population is known to be a normal distribution. In question part D, it purposely brought us into a different situation. So let's read further. Statement number two of the central limit theorem say a, had a further statement. Furthermore, without x, without the beginning, so x here, keep in mind that it's the beginning population. So without x being normally distributed, so this intentionally brings up the, the situation where we don't know whether or not our beginning population was a bell curve or not. Then no worries. Sampling, any sampling distribution, capital X bar sub n can still become a normal distribution with center at mu X bar and standard deviation at, at sigma X bar. For here's the, the critical requirement right here for n being greater than or equals to 30. So this is how I was making my argument in this problem part D right here. So looking at my writing board here, but right in the beginning of the question, we took away that, that understanding, let's say the assumption about our beginning population was a normal, a normal distribution. That is now taken away, so we can no longer use that as our reasoning to lead to the sampling distribution to be a normal distribution. However, since sample size, which is the number n right here, according to the central limit theorem, the sample size is being greater than or equal to 30, because n equals 36 here, then we can still have a sampling distribution where it has, it has a normal distribution shape and center at the mu x bar with the standard error calculated previously. And so, let me now point out how useful this statement number two of our central limit theorem here for us. The idea now is that for any sampling distribution, capital X bar subscript n. The sampling distribution capital X bar subscript n can always become a normal distribution taking center at mu X bar that we can calculate easily and sigma X bar to be the average spread. This normal distribution shape on any general, on any sampling distribution capital X bar sub n here is, can always be true as long as the sample size being a number greater than or equals 30. How useful can this be? Thus, a further understanding into this is that we can always guarantee, we can always be guaranteed to have a sampling distribution being a normal distribution, being a normally distributed population, completely independent, completely independent with having x being normally distributed at mu and sigma. So we don't need, to, we, we can be independent with this information because we are not always uh, able to find out this information. We don't always have people simply guarantee this information for us and we don't always have time to verify if our beginning population is a normally distributed population or not. And look at the number here. Well, 
any viewer who views this video for now is one is is uh, very curious about where this number thirty comes from. Allow me not to uh, explain where this number came came from simply because it's going to take a lot of uh, formal math to prove this value, but we can now use that as a result. So look at the usefulness of this number over here, a sample size being anywhere 30 or more. Sample size equals 30 or more is not too much to find. We can easily find a sample with sample size 30 or more and as long as we can find it, as long as we decide a sample size being 30 or more in each sample then automatically what's good for that is that we can guarantee to have a sampling distribution being on a bell curve and we go completely independent with this piece of information x must be a normal distribution we don't need to worry about that and again the way I see it now is that if we really want this sampling distribution to be a normal distribution but in the worst case, your sample size is being less than 30, then the only way to make this work, then we must be dependent on the information about the beginning population to be a bell curve or not. So we do need to have our beginning population to be a bell curve in order for a sampling distribution where sample size below 30 can be a normal distribution. I must further address that if sample size is still below 30, having a, basically having a small sample indicating that we have a small sample and uh, we don't know about whether the beginning population can be a no, being on a bell curve normal distribution or not. So I'm putting a cross right here it just simply means we don't know. So if we don't have this information and our sample mean and our sample size is still below 30. Do not say no to this statement. This statement capital X bar sub n being on a bell curve or not Yes or no? The answer is still not a no as well. Here we just simply do not have enough information because just because just simply because we fail having that dependent information that we need right here. But if we really build histogram who knows that could, could turn out to be a normal distribution shape for here. So simply because you have a sample size being below 30 plus we don't know whether or not the beginning population can be a normally distributed population or not. We can still we, we still cannot say no to this question and the answer yes or no still depends on other factor. So here all I can say is we do not have enough information. So if we don't want to build histograms to, to eventually come up with uh, distribution shape, then we just simply do not have enough information.